It doesn't help to broadcast when I don't have this, the sound on. <laughs> this is a little bit about the invitation, about the meaning of Lent for us. Sisters and brothers in Christ, every year at Easter, we celebrate with joy our redemption and renewal through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. The season of Lent is a time to prepare for this celebration and to make room in our lives for the Spirit of God to renew us in this mystery. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our continuing need for repentance and our need for the love and forgiveness shown to us in Jesus Christ. I invite you, therefore, in the name of Christ, to observe a holy Lent through self-examination and penitence, by prayer and fasting, by practicing works of love, and by reading and reflecting on the word, on God's holy word. Let's begin our Lenten journey by together confessing our sins and seeking the forgiveness, the new life that is promised us in Christ. So I'd ask if you might turn in your hymnals. To number 496, Sweet Hour of Prayer. Oh, that is a sweet hour of prayer. 496. Oh, 496. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, that calls me from a world of care, and bids me at my Father's throne make all my wants and wishes known. In seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found relief, and oft escaped the tempter's snare by thy return, sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, the joys I feel, the bliss I share of those whose anxious spirits burn with strong desires for thy return. With such I hasten to the place where God my Savior shows his face and gladly take my station there and wait for the sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, thy wings shall my petition bear. To him whose truth and faithfulness engage the waiting soul to bless. And since he bids me seek his face, believe his word and trust his grace, I'll cast on him my every care and wait for the sweet hour of prayer. Would you pray with me, gracious loving God? And thank you for our gathering together in this new time to begin this season, this journey of 40 days that leads to the cross. And from the cross we know you have provided our deliverance. From all those things that would seek to rob us of the joy and fullness of life, including our sin, but also those temptations that seek to draw our attention away from the true meaning and source of our life, which is you and Jesus and the grace that you offer to us. In this time of sweet prayer, may we be real with you. May we be honest with ourselves. May we perceive what you may want us to do. We know that it's a time of self-examination and penitence, of prayer and fasting, 
But fasting that you require is not necessarily just giving up food for a period of time. You tear us away from certain things so that we may focus on what is important. It's a matter of focus. You fast to find focus. Where do you want us to invest ourselves? That Sometimes other things tend to rob us of those things that are most important. And so we identify something that is important to us and we surrender it for a time. But not just to give up on that, but also to be able to take upon ourselves something different. Maybe it is the reading of your word more intensely. Maybe it is in writing cards to someone, so others, to encourage them. Maybe it's in visiting with certain people so that we might be able to build those relationships Maybe it's in serving in some unique capacity, whether it's visiting a nursing home or whatever you may call us to do. You ask us to surrender something that is in our lives so that we may take upon ourselves something else that will draw us to you. And so show us, O oh God, during this hour, what it is that you would have us to release ourselves from so that we might draw closer to you. Lord, we just ask that you might be with us. Help us to focus. And help us to find your presence with us on this journey. For this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We start out with a confession. Our confession comes from the Word of God, which is Psalm 51. I invite you to participate with me in this confession. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgression. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you and you only have we sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge us. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Would you sing with me? Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, O Lord, or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and restore right spirit within me. Only then I will be able to teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will turn back to you. Save me from blood guilt, O God, the God who saves me, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice. I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. It is my life, honest and transparent, that I offer you right now. Our teaching actually comes from that, that psalm today. I think it's important for us to look at it and to identify some of the things that it says and remind ourselves of those things.
Have mercy on God because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion. Blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin. For I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day by day. It's important to realize that the word there is wash. Wash away my sin. Today we have before us the basin. And the water that reminds us of our baptism. It is through the baptism where we have confessed our sins and our need for God and God's grace that we are aware of what God has done for us. Our sins are washed away from us. And so we are brought to remember that today as we gather to this worship, that as we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and forgives us our sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. No matter what it is that we feel that we have done or have not done, we know that there's forgiveness that's offered to us, and we claim that. There are many people who do not like to recognize that they're sinners. And they can never enjoy the great grace that God offers us in knowing that despite our sin, we are loved and wanted. Instead, people try to hide their sin from others, from God, and even themselves. It's only when we're honest with ourselves we can admit our sin. And the sins are not necessarily the big things that we oftentimes think of, that we look on the news and we say, oh man, they're pretty sad. We're not like that. We understand that our sin is something deeper. It's about our relationship. When we're not close, we're not doing the things that we know we should, and there's more that we could do. That becomes, if it's part of us and what we feel God calls us, that becomes a sin because we're rejecting what God would really want for in our lives. So sin is broader. And yes, we may be free of some of the sins that we might read of in the commandments, but there's still, as we are honest with ourselves, we know there's places that just aren't right. And somehow we can only make them right when we get close to God. And God says, you know, just come to me. Come to me, all you who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, because I am meek and humble heart. Take my yoke upon you. It's an easier path than trying to carry your load by yourself. Then it goes on. I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. Makes me times at night when before I go to bed I have my time of confession in it. I can look through my day and I can acknowledge the things that I did that were well and done well, and but I can also recognize something that remains incomplete within me. Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. Against you and you alone. We might be able to look at our lives and say, well, you know, I haven't abused Charlie today. Day's not over yet, Charlie. You know, I may have not, not said something improper. I might have, you know, whatever it is I, that I would count as sin, I might have not done those things, but I have still sinned against God. I still have not done what I need to to be close to God. And that's sin. You will be proved right in what you say, and your judgment against me is just. Because I can't hide my need from you, God. I can hide it from others. I can try to hide it from you, but that's just a waste of time. I know that I have sinned. I have sinned against you. may not be that I have sinned against someone else, but I have sinned against you. You want more from me than what I want from myself. And I settle for far less than what you would want from me to know and feel and enjoy. 
I was born a sinner. Oh, this is one that's very contentious, right? I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. But you desire honesty even from the womb, teaching me wisdom even there. That's a tough one for people to, to wrestle with. How can we look at a little child and say, oh, that person is, is a sinner? But we understand that one reason why we're born in this life, we also have the end result is death. We can't avoid that. Our very life is separated from God. From the minute we are conceived and the minute we are born, we are separated from God. God then invites us to come to him, to be close to him. But we are separated. And all the, the evil that we see in the world and all the frustration that we experience in ourselves is because we are separated from the one who made our life, breathed life within us, and has dreams and desires for us. And Jeremiah says, I know the plans I have for you. We may not know the plans that God has for us, but he knows the plans he has for us. Plans to do you good, not to harm Plans to bless us. God wants us to have the best in life, and we sometimes settle for good. See, it's not necessarily sin in that we choose bad, but we just settle for good. When God wants us, come to me. I have the best I have for you. And from the minute that we are conceived in this life, this world has its impact upon us, we are separated from God. And God is always there, but we have to respond to his invitation. Come, come, come. And many don't respond. Hopefully we're responding. You desire honesty from the womb, teaching me wisdom even there. Purify me from my sins and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Just as with the water of baptism. Oh, it's not just one time that we are baptized. But every day we need to remember our baptism. I am no longer my own, but I am yours, O God. That's the Wesleyan covenant prayer I say every morning. I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me with whom you will. Rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by you or laid aside for you. Exalted for you or laid low for you. I freely and heartily yield all things for your pleasure and disposal. And it goes on. What a way to start the day. Oh, I give back my joy again. You have broken me. Now let me rejoice. Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a, a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. See, the more we move away from God, the Holy Spirit's there, but we... We distance ourselves. The Holy Spirit is God, and we distance ourselves from God. When we should be running towards God, we distance ourselves from God. To the point that sometimes we can go so far that the Holy Spirit cannot even whisper in our ear anymore. We die inside. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Then I will be able to teach your ways to others, and they will return to you too. Forgive me for shedding blood, O God who saves, then I will joyfully sing of your forgiveness. What blood have we shed? What blood is the psalmist saying that he shed? I haven't taken anyone's life, but yet I have. Jesus' blood. My sins have caused his death. But also, I have shed blood when I have not cared about someone that I was called to care for. When I have not responded as God wanted me to, like Jesus said, as some said, well, Lord, Lord, we did this for you, did that for you, did this for you. But whenever you didn't do this, you didn't do it also unto me. It's not those who call out, Lord, Lord, but those who really allow him to be Lord and that we care for what he cares for. And if we don't care for what he cares for, that's sin and it separates us from God. 
and our joy is removed from us. Do you have a joyous faith? This is a solemn service, but do you have a joyous faith? Do you wake up in the morning and realize all the goodness that God has given to you that you do not deserve? Can you thank God for that? Because only as we thank God for what we have do we is that joy amplified because we can be open to what other things that God might want to bring into our lives. We can't bring any other persons to a realization of the wonders of walking in faith with Jesus Christ unless we first have walked there ourselves. Only then will I be able to teach your ways to rebels and they will return to you. We first must have to be before we can do and help others come and find their way. Unseal my lips, O Lord, that my mouth may praise you. Do not, you do not desire a sacrifice. Ash Wednesday is about sacrifices. What can I give up that I can then do to get closer to God? But that's not the sacrifice that the psalmist was talking about. They used to have to bring blood sacrifices, animal sacrifices. He says, you do not desire a sacrifice like that. Well, I would offer one. You do not want a burn offering. The sacrifice, yes, the sacrifice he does want. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O oh God. He wants us. He wants us to give him our lives. Because he gave them to us in the first place. So as we come to this time of thinking about what we might, what Lent might mean for us. Pray that we might truly be transparent with God. And think about the ways, how we'd like to just, for even 40 days, sacrifice something that becomes part of our mundane existence so that we can actually draw closer to him. Because he gave everything for us. Come, let us reason. That's what God says. Come, let us reason, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as wool. Though they be as red as crimson, they shall be as white as snow. The words of Isaiah 1, 18. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. During this time of silence, we don't like silence. We always like it filled with activity and someone talking. And I'm more than willing to talk. <laughs> but during this time of silence, consider and maybe compose a vow you would like to make to God for this time of Lent. I didn't pass out cards if you wanted to be able to write out your vow, what you'd like to do during these 40 days. But you can think of one yourself. Make a vow. What's your vow during these next 40 days? How are you going to draw close to God? How are you going to be more intensely focused in your life and fulfill what God might want you to do. I'll have cards on Sunday that if you want to write one down and put it in the offering plate, that's, that's, that's awesome. If not, you make your vow to God and God knows it. God holds us to our vows.
Oh God, we thank you for ash. As we see the ash, we are reminded from dust we came and dust we shall return. And though we may not like it, O oh Lord, we know that life has its beginning and we think that we have a lot of time. But for those of us who have lived a few years, we realize how quickly time passes. We are like the dust that's blown around by the wind. Our lives are as dust. And so all our life is like ash. What we do is to burn those things, take them from us that will prevent us from fully living our life in the moment. They become ash to us so that we can focus upon what is most important in life. Lord, we thank you for oil. It is crushed and made from the olive. And likewise, in life, without you, we can be easily crushed. And so when we mix the oil and the ash together, we are reminded that we need to allow some things to die so that we can live to that which is most important. Thank you for the oil. Thank you for the opportunity of committing ourselves to following you. The cost of following you is to surrender all things. When we surrender all things, you give things back to us. But we first have to surrender them to you. And then they're returned to us. Some are not returned to us. Instead, there are other things that you give to us that is even better. But we don't know that until we surrender. Bless, O oh God, this water, this ash, this oil. May it be for us a reminder of your call and claim upon our lives. And we'd be ever grateful in the name of Jesus. I invite you as you come, as you are able to now, and you are ready, just to come forward. And you're invited to go over, if you wish, touch the water. Remember your baptism. Remember how God has touched your life and freed you. And you're welcome to come over by me. And you may want some oil with ash in it. You may want just regular oil to anoint you for the vow that you're making, that you might experience the Holy Spirit closer to you in these next days. You may have the oil and the anointing upon your forehead or on your hands, depending on what God calls you, either to think in a different way or to do something different. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Come, as you feel you are called. Jesus near. May you hold me near. And everything you think, and everything you do, do it all for you. Sebastian, I know you are the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you know he loves you. Christine. sacrifice of your love that you have for him and for others fill you to overflowing. Father, may I anoint you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May all the 
you think and feel. May all that you do be guided by your devotions in heaven. Amen. May I greet you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May you hold him dear. It's easy to anoint you. Not too much hair there. <laughs> I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May you know he's got you in the palm of his hands and that he cares for you. I wouldn't know what to do if I didn't pick him. Him, we don't have Sylvia today. She's taking care of a sick grandchild. But uh, uh, we pray for them as that family has gone through a, a lot of illnesses of late. But I invite you to join with me in singing this hymn that hopefully is familiar enough to you. If not, you can follow along with me. Lord, who's throughout these 40 days. Lord, who throughout these 40 days for us didst fast and pray. Teach us with thee to mourn our sins and close by thee to stay. As thou with Satan didst contend and didst the victory win, I'll give us strength in thee to fight in thee to conquer sin. As thou didst hunger, bear, and thirst, to teach us, gracious Lord, to die to self and chiefly live by thy most holy word. And through these days of penitence, and through thy passion tide, yea, evermore in life and death, Jesus with us abide. Abide with us, that so this life of suffering overpass, and Easter of unending joy we may attain at last. I ask that you might feel blessed by this day. I know this is more of a solemn start to the Lenten season, but Lent is a solemn time. And even as we participate, I'm filled with joy. I get to see Mark and Mary that I haven't seen for a long time and haven't ridden with Mark for a long time. I think he's afraid because I've kept writing. He's been on sailboats. <laughs> But I'm going to get him back into it anyway. And just to you also, you realize that uh, someone will be watching us, someone you also know, and that's Esther, Esther Williams. She's a member of our congregation, 
and she's serving right now as our missionary nurse to the Cherokee Nation in Oklahoma. And uh, there are others who, who also join with us. And so I ask that you might be blessed by the fact that God loves you, calls you, and sends you as you leave and go out to your different ways in the different relationships you have at school, at work, in your home, in your neighborhood. God has called you. Show others my love. Be Christ for them. That they might know that God too loves them. Lord, bless us as we leave this place in this time. May successive days be filled with moments of joy as we fulfill the vows that we have made to you. And we'll give you the praise and glory and honor because of the joy you return to us. In Christ's name, amen.